Lindsay Littlefield, and I'm so excited to be part of the Team Member Giving Campaign this year. The Team Member Giver Giving Campaign, the Team Member Giving Campaign starts April 1st through April 30th, and it's a chance where we can give back and so support our mission and support Remarkable across our health system. I'm excited because Every day, I hear stories about the wonderful things that the Riverside team members do to help support our patients, families, and residents. Sometimes, though, our, our, our communities need something additional. Our, our patient that we're caring for needs something more. They might need support in funeral services. They might need support with transportation or medications. And our mission to care for others as we care for those we love allows us through the Riverside Foundation. Oh, man. Why don't you start from the, um, the what it does for the, the, the team member incorporation piece? I might have to start from the beginning. Oh, you can start from and the beginning. Then, and, oh, and then totally. it can, and then can cut, cut and paste. Oh, yeah. Hi, my name is Nancy Littlefield, and I'm so glad to be part of the team member giving campaign this year. Like so many of you, I have such a joy in contributing to the mission of Riverside Health System. That's done through the hard work that we do every day, but it's also done when we hear of a need, either through a team member or a patient or a family that needs something more than what we can do to help heal them in the care and services that we provide. That's where we need the Riverside Foundation. And what they do every single day helps support Remarkable. Some of the things they've done in 2018 is help with funeral expenses for an unexpected death, help a team member who's gone through a, a, a hard, hard circumstance within their life, a patient or a resident who might need additional support or uh, finances to help with transportation or medication. Your generosity and through this campaign helps to fill that need and helps us to live our mission to care for others as we care for those we love. This year's campaign starts April 1st through April 30th, and I'm asking you to join me in helping to make this a most successful campaign, where we can, through kindness, respect, and helping our residents and team members give, go above and beyond to support our mission to care for others as we care for those we love. Through the month of April, you'll hear remarkable stories of how your generosity made a difference, where your giving from the past year helped support Remarkable. Thank you for doing everything you can to help support our patients and our communities, for going above and beyond, for being part of this campaign, and for caring for others as we care for those we love. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'll be take one. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. yeah, we love it. I mean, that's and that's uh, you know you cut and paste. Yeah, um, cut and paste. That's the beauty of Matt. Somebody like Matt. Yeah, exactly. Strategy. Yeah, no, there there are some amazing sound bites in there, and I think you're you're hit like you're hitting a lot. It's okay. Of different Not talking too fast. Great. Go ahead. Hi, my name is Nancy Littlefield, and I am a team member at Riverside Health System. This year, April 1st through April 30th, we start our team member campaign. And it's a chance where you and I can give back and contribute to our mission to help support remarkable things across Riverside Health System. Every day, 24-7, we help, help patients heal, we keep them safe, we respect their wishes. Sometimes we need to give a little bit more. Through, a, um, through, the Riverside, through the Riverside Foundation, we can contribute through a special needs that they might have that's just outside of healing. Sometimes uh, help, with help with reputation, help with transportation, help with funeral expenses, help a team member who's gone through significant loss and needs that extra help from the Riverside family. Thank you for being part of this campaign that has made such a difference across Riverside Health System. If you need information about the team member campaign, first you'll hear messages all through the month of April that'll help, help you in knowing where to give and how to give. But also feel free to reach out to the Riverside Foundation and any of their team members. They'd be happy to come to you, to you and help you. Yeah, they will, they'll be happy to. <laughs> they would, they would just be thrilled. Uh, what am I gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're show up with donut holes and- They will bring you donuts. They will bring you donuts. <laughs> And Chick Fil A. Uh, no, it's uh, yeah, it's I, it's really about having a conversation with them. Maybe maybe allude to the fact that the communication and the elevation of what we're able to do for other people starts with their ideas and and what they do every day. Okay. And together through the teamwork between the partnership between our department and theirs, we can really you know make knock it out of the park. Okay. Yeah. The Riverside. 
family campaign or the team member campaign last year contributed many things to help support our mission. Some of those things that I'm personally aware of is we gave Google Glasses to cancer patients who were having an infusion. The Google Glasses allowed them to do a couple of things. One is they sat through the infusion, maybe they wanted to walk on the beach or climb that mountain, or maybe they just wanted to go see some things on their bucket list that they haven't been allowed to go see. We've also helped with transportation and medications. Um, we've helped um, team members who's had a sudden catastrophic loss within their family and helped support them. These things could never be done without you. Through the month of April, you'll hear some stories of how to give back um, and how to uh, contribute to the Riverside Foundation. And if you need any more information, please feel free to reach out to the Riverside Foundation team members or what's our address? <laughs> Okay, why don't we start? Is it rolling, Matt? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Oh, yeah, we're rolling. And we can, we're going to do cuts and edits and everything. So okay, we'll great. Your nice, your, your good introduction. Tell them who you are. Okay. Hi, my name is Tony Watkins, and I'm the System Food and Nutrition Service Director. I am so honored to have the opportunity to speak to you today about giving, giving on behalf of Riverside Healthcare System. As many of you who know me know that I am all about food and anything that tastes good tastes good to me. And so today I'd like to come and ask for a donation on behalf of Riverside Healthcare System. In our world today, we can't always know. Okay. That's fine. You can, you can uh, start from whatever point you want to do and go all the way through. You can start from the beginning and get into that, or we can cut and go kind of... Okay, good, good. Talk me, more about why. I'm going to play a little bit. Yeah, yeah, play. Okay. So it's exactly what you There's do. There's many things in my mind. Um, in the, um, t Hello, my name is Tony Watkins, and I'm, direct, I'm the System Food and Nutrition Service Director for Riverside Healthcare System. And today, I have the honor and privilege to talk to you about giving. In today's world, we just don't know when a disaster will come about. Many of you are probably aware of issues that have happened globally across our country, such as Hurricane Katrina, issues with uh, other countries. We've had numerous things to take place that we couldn't plan for. And even locally, we've had challenges with tornadoes, even as recently as a year ago that impacted our system. And with that being said, this is where the foundation has the opportunity to come in place. Did you know that with our giving, that we average over $2 million within our regions in terms of giving to various uh, individuals across the system? And it shows, ah, guys. You're right. No, you, you know what else you can say is, the work you do every day inspire your, the community to donate. Okay. okay, I'm gonna start again. He's still going. Is he? No, but I didn't see a light before. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, what? Oh, yeah. I think the recording light is on. Okay. Hi, my name is Tony Watkins, and I'm System Food and Nutrition Service Director for Riverside Healthcare System. It is an honor and privilege to come and talk to you today about why I believe in giving to the Riverside Health System Foundation. Are you aware that we that members have contributed over two million dollars? within the Riverside Health System community. Can you imagine two million dollars? What a value, what an impact with our organization. I think that would start. You're, but you're, you're I doing could hear. such a good job that like that. Was that, was that kind yes, of the direction? Yes, though, that can you imagine part is amazing. Okay, like, okay, perfect. okay. Let's start over. Yeah, yeah. Hi, my name is Tony Watkins, and I am so excited to talk to you today about the impact of giving with Riverside Healthcare System. I have recently discovered that Riverside Healthcare System Foundation has had an impact in the community, community with providing over $2 million. Can you imagine $2 million invested in our community? So as an employee and a leader in our community, I would like to, to definitely encourage you to give, to give with any amount. Um, there will be wonderful opportunities throughout the month of April for you to see uh, how we're going to compete with each other, 
but also remembering that a small token of any amount would give you various gifts. And if you are a person who likes bling, well, of course, we have to have the bag. And so if you would like to give, again, feel free to get involved. Reach out to your teammates. Reach out to the foundation to find out what to do. We're, always, we're not always um, comfortable with emergencies. Frankly, I don't know anyone who might be comfortable with an emergency. But we do know that emergencies occur. And we've heard of many global catastrophes that have occurred over the past several years. We even had recent concerns that hit our communities here in Virginia within the past year. I had several team members, by the way, who were able to benefit from the gifts that we provided through the foundation. Many of you know, uh, for those of you who know me, I'm, I'm officially four years old um, as of this month. And so four years uh, into a, an organization that has 100 years of history is just mind-boggling to me. I choose to give because I see the difference that Riverside Health System makes. It makes a difference with our mission. It makes a difference with our vision. Thank you, Riverside, for all that you've done. And thanks to you for your ability to impact what we do within this organization. I, know. I just shut you because she was doing she was the one such a rock and roll. Rock and roll. I don't know what I said. I was like, well, the red button is on. So no, <laughs> yeah, everything's, everything's good. Everything's yeah. good. I was like, I'm just going to safely assume oh, that the button is on. Shut up. I don't know what I said, but um, I figure I need to start over again. Yeah, so that was it, really it keeps good. going different ways. Yeah, and it was good. It was good because you said the Riverside Health System Foundation, and so that's good, keeping that in okay. there. Okay. So, Riverside Health System. I like what you really like what you said about your, your being able to help team members. Um, because that's true. I did have team members who oh, yeah, benefited. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, of course, all that stuff's anonymous, but, but I mean, the, the, it is still anonymous with an, an incredibly large, you know. You can, yeah. How many employees do you even have under you? Like, uh, but it's, it's over 200. Yeah, so yeah. exactly. And so, um, yeah, and that, and that was a really great thing to say. Um, yeah, so you want to just keep running through and do it again? It was okay. good. I loved your, um, I'm wondering... I this was too awkward. I want to make, I want to give her, if, I, if this short stool is over there, Matt, and it was laying down on it, would she be able, you won't see that, will you? No. If it's like right here. Oh, that that would be perfect. And then she could just grab. Okay. Is that, that's not yeah, your that's shot, perfect. right? Yeah. Okay. That, because she, she, she was like. <laughs> I knew that didn't work. It was, it was fine, and it would have been fine, but I was like, how about for her? I was like, oh my. Okay. All right, cool. <laughs> Okay, we're going, to, we're going to try this again. Yeah, it was very good. Keep on going. Okay. Hello, my name is Tony Watkins, and I'm so excited to come and talk to you today about giving with the Riverside Health System Foundation. You will have an opportunity to make such a difference with the Riverside Health System Foundation in the upcoming month, precisely throughout the month of April. But let's talk a little bit about what a difference that will make. So are you aware that the impact of giving in the communities has been over two million dollars. Can you imagine two million dollars? What a difference it has made in our community. And as an employee, it also helps for us to invest because as others see us invest, they realize the difference that it makes with seeing how we care for our community. I've recently discovered that I, ha I am actually four years old. Can you believe me? Four years old. No, I've actually been with the Riverside organization for four years now. But with, the hundred, with over 100 years invested in this system, that this facility, our organization has made, what a difference. And I feel like my four years is not that much. But I think it's an, an example of showing that when we think about giving to this organization, it doesn't matter if I've been here a year or four years, the little bit that I can give also makes a difference. So we have individuals who are able to give small tokens of appreciation and large tokens of appreciation. Now, if you're like me, and you like to get things as well, there is going to be a little bit of competition in each community, so we'd love for you to take advantage of that. But you'll also be able to receive such gifts as this 
to be able to use with your bag. And if you are a purse person like me, or a bag lady, you get a chance to win one of these bags as well, to receive a bag as well. So definitely, although we'll have some small tokens of appreciation, it really doesn't take away from the ability for you to give and to show the difference. I've also had, you know, I don't know if it's a privilege, but I've been able to see uh, my team members benefit from this foundation as well, because you know what? We can't plan for emergencies, right? And you never know if you're gonna be the person in need, and I appreciate that. So guess what? I choose to give as well. I choose to give because I've been able to see the difference that it makes, the difference that it makes and shows with our mission statement. And so as, as uh, I move forward to, uh, to move into the rest of my workday, I'd like to simply end with encouraging you to give because it makes a difference. Thank you. Great. Nice. All right, and I think that what, I what think else? That we've got a lot of. I mean, is there anything else that's coming to you? Because I feel like I can cut and paste from that couple, couple four takes and really get some some great stuff. Um, what do you feel? I feel like the one thing I would say is that maybe we do the ex exclusively do the badge clip and the bag. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's describe this okay. as. Um, as and when you make a contribution of one dollar or more, you will have the opportunity to sport your support. And so I think this will, will, will work nicely on my lapel, don't you? And if you, have, if you would like to give more, you will have the opportunity to receive this wonderful insulated bag. Note the location for your water, and if you're a bag lady like me, you might really appreciate that. All jokes aside, I'd like to thank you for, for just considering to give and, and I think you will see, if you haven't already done so, the difference that it's made to move forward to give to an organization that's over 100 years old that has continued to invest in the community. Thank you. Yeah? <laughs> Okay. Hey, I'm Dr. Frazier. I just want to take this uh, moment to uh, really try to encourage you to give to the foundation during this time in April through April 30th for the team member giving campaign. No amount that you give is too large or too small, other than large is good, so think about that. But uh, those funds mean so much to so many people. They help patients sometimes get just basic necessities. Uh, help with transportation, uh, electricity. Um, you know, it's hard to care for yourself and take care of yourself if you are worried about just basic things like groceries and things like that. So uh, we help patients. We help our own team members. The HELP Fund uh, helps some of our own colleagues with some of the same sorts of uh, basic necessities sometimes, so that can help. Um, we've... Uh, are doing a simulation lab. It's going to train many, many providers and nurses and students, uh, and that's going to have big dividends in the future to help take care of patients better with, with uh, more advanced skills. And then there are things that we give our patients, like uh, particularly our cancer patients, things that we wouldn't otherwise be able to provide, like massage or um, uh, they have these virtual goggles now that they can wear while they're getting their treatments uh, that kind of takes their mind off while they're doing those. So this really, really good work uh, from the foundation. It's all because of all the money that you've given and the uh, community members have given. And uh, so really, please think about uh, contributing during this uh, giving season and during this campaign. And I've got an idea for you. Uh, we work with such great people here at Riverside. And while we may uh, nominate them for a Champion of Caring nomination or something like that, I tell you something that's really nice is to give something to the foundation and do it in honor of one of your colleagues or a couple of them. And then it's really a nice twofer because not only are you really giving to an excellent cause, but you're also letting some of your colleagues know how much uh, they mean to you and how much you appreciate them. So again, this goes through April 30th. Uh, please give to the campaign. Thank you so much. Sweet, easy Somebody, edit. Somebody, <laughs> somebody practiced. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so do one more time for me, do, or do like an introduction of yourself and kind of for the people out there who don't have the luxury of knowing exactly what your day-to-day -day is, maybe, you know, kind of 
talk about what that is you do. So we'll help put you in perspective in the great wide world of Riverside for those who don't already know. All right. Hey there, my name's Charlie Frazier. Uh, I am a family doc, uh, but I'm also the chief medical information officer for the health system. So uh, I'm one of the folks who have brought you Epic or Eye Care. Uh, don't hold that against me. Uh, but I do want to uh, really encourage you uh, to give to the foundation during this uh, team member giving campaign that runs through April 30th. Um, and really no amount is too small, but uh, if you want to give some large donations, that's fine too. Uh, but the work uh, that gets done with the funds from the foundation are really, really important. Not just to our patients, uh, where we, you know, we help patients sometimes just get some of the basic necessities that they need. Um, uh, it's hard to take care of yourself if you can't get to doctor's appointments or uh, if you're worried about uh, your lights being turned off. So we help patients a lot uh, with the funds from the foundation, but we also help our own team members. Uh, the HELP Fund kind of helps with some of those same basic necessities for our own people that we work with, uh, and that can be very, very important for our colleagues. Uh, and then uh, other things we do for our patients are, are give them extra services that we wouldn't otherwise be able to pay for, uh, particularly in the cancer area. Uh, I heard recently that they now have these uh, virtual goggles that they can wear to kind of take their mind off of things while they're getting treatments. So it's things like that. Um, it's, it's getting training equipment. Uh, we are outfitting a simulation lab now uh, based on the donations uh, from the foundation or to the foundation uh, in, in honor of Dr. Brandon Rogers. And uh, that lab is going to train many residents, uh, nurses, and other students, and our attending physicians in uh, procedures and other skills uh, that will really have an impact on the care that we provide our uh, patients. So um, the foundation really does a lot, and it's all based on what we give, what you give, our, what our community members give. So please uh, consider giving uh, during this team member giving campaign. Uh, again, it runs through April 30th. Thank you. Voila. All right. Anything else you want to say? The, any whys? Uh, you know, like why, why you personally stroke a check? Why you well, show you can up use, to do things like you this? You can use that team member. Yeah, so been with Riverside about seven years. Started at the college, and that's where we kind of grow our workforce and help develop nurses and practical nurses, radiology, radiologic technologists, that kind of thing, so the workforce. Um, worked with our students to become team members, developed a kind of desire to work more with our patients and work more with our team members, developed into patient safety, and that's where I moved and grew within that, and then just recently moved into patient experience role. Yeah. And can you tell me, tell us about um, some of your experiences with the Riverside Foundation and yeah. encouraging others to be a part of that in one capacity or another? Yeah. So I would say pretty much within the first year of me being with Riverside, I partnered with the Riverside Foundation and developed that um, partnership with them and that love for our team members and for our patients and realizing the need for this type of community involvement, our team member involvement with donating, with supporting. So a lot of our team members can't donate themselves, but they can advocate for our patients and for our team members. So the foundation helps support our students who are out there. So if you can give a little bit to help them get through, I've seen it really change the lives of our students. Um, I think the importance of feeling like we're a part of something bigger. So sometimes we feel a little siloed in our jobs, and so we don't know necessarily the impact that we have with everyone. But if you can say, this is impacting another department, this is impacting patients throughout the health system, that really makes us, because anybody who's in healthcare has probably a heart bigger than their body, and we all want to help and do more. And I think the philanthropic culture is out there now and it's good to give and people know that so they want to give they just don't necessarily know where to give so to know that you can kind of do it internal and kind of keep that growth within the health system yeah that's great yeah thank you yeah well, uh, tell us about some of your 
you've given in the past, but yeah. why have you chosen <clears throat> certain areas to make an investment in yourself? Yeah, so I, I personally have given and kind of encouraged others. So I think my relationship with Riverside is not just my job. I'm a patient. My families are patients. My daughter goes to the daycare. So I think it's kind of integrated throughout. So I know there's need. And so just our cost needs to be supported through extra things. So what we pay for our services isn't covering some of the building needs and some of the technology needs and some of the signage needs and some of um, our patients who can't afford to pay and some of our team members who can't afford to pay and don't have the ability to do that. So for us to be able to help them, um, I think is why I give and why I encourage others. I don't think they understand the big impact that the foundation really has. Very good. Uh, And what about, um, tell us about some of your team members and how they have helped rally around the concept of philanthropy. You can start back to start like your Michael Hamilton. Yeah. All those folks, your Taffy's. (coughs) Yeah. So I've had some great colleagues in the past and I know well in the future of they have such big hearts and we get excited about things and we want to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. And that's why I think people are drawn to a health system that is connected to other things. So I thought things I thought of being a part of a team and we set a goal and I don't think there's probably anybody more competitive than healthcare workers. They, they want to win. We all want to win. And um, I think the thought of, can we be a part of this? So team members like Michael and Taffy, they were on board and they want to be a part of this. They want to rally people around it because they know how much good it has. So to kind of spread that word of the good, not just, hey, I'm giving a bunch of money, you give a bunch of money too. And um, the thought of if you can just have that impact, that's also giving, that volunteerism, giving your time, helping with some of our fundraisers, helping with our events that we have out in town, you know, because reach those people who can give maybe a little bit more than yourself. Very good. I like that. Um, can you think of any examples, or actually I should start that, rewind that back. What do you think that, um, how do you think that team members can partner with the foundation in order to get the foundation to do a better job? Like, what do you, what do you think that the foundation, and, and this can all circle back around, but yeah. what can we when I say we, the foundation, what can we do to help people understand what's available to themselves as team members through maybe the help fund or available to their patients or family members or their patients? What can we do better um, to, to, to get that message out? Or what have we done right in the past that you thought we could do more of? What, you know, what's resonated with you? I think something that's resonated with me as far as impact and how the foundation has gotten the word out has been social media and then appearances. So you're working with people, you're getting team members kind of at the the ground level to speak about it, to talk about it, to really have the impact on your unit. So to say those cuddle cots or to have the daycare now have the iPads and that kind of thing, that, that hits home. So how, because I don't want to say we're all kind of like, what's in it for me or how does that affect me or my loved one? I think that helps with that and social media. I think that's where it gets us. And it's very quick to share on LinkedIn. It's quick to share on Facebook, um, Instagram, anything like that. I think that's the easy way to do it. And that's how we're kind of all connected. I love that. Yeah. Because we're always begging people to share things. I know. I know. <laughs> and uh, now the social media platform has grown. Yes. They gave so me, good job. Keys to the I know. They did. Oh, I, know. I know. I'm so glad. I'm so no, glad. Yeah, that's, that's really great. It takes a, it takes a village to do that. So yeah. We appreciate that. And we're the village to share it. Yes. So you just got to give us that platform. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's what we're working on doing. Yeah. Um, So I guess maybe circle back to my the question I was originally getting at. Of the projects that you have seen come to fruition at the foundation, do any stick out to you as sort of the most meaningful to you? Maybe with the exception of you know you like the iPads. Yeah. Yeah. But which I left off the list. Even Amy left that off of the list. I had to go look over that. But um, yeah. yeah, maybe with the, you know, t- the scholarships. About, why don't you go into detail about yeah. that? So I, I think I would also make mention of that line item was not in their budget, you know, that, that kind of direction. So what, what difference has that made for you as a parent of someone being cared for within Riverside? 
Um, so the iPads and the technology system at the daycare, that's huge. It may not impact my daughter right now, but it's something that I think future parents would want. And, as, and I guess as a patient too or anybody, we want to help those that come after us. We want to see that improvement. So I think with an iPad, that connection to our child, because throughout the day, we don't necessarily want to just call and say, hey, what's going on? But for us to be able to have pictures or to have messages about what's going on, if they've fallen or something like that, they always call. But to be like, hey, are they doing okay? So you don't have to call. It just gives that sense of comfort that you can move on with your day and not have to totally stop your day or be wondering the whole time until you get your child at five or six and be like, are they okay? Are they still crying for me? You know, so it really gives you a peace of mind where you can go throughout your day and really care for our patients and our team members without that. Yeah. I'll say also too, the scholarships. I think that was something that at the very beginning, I saw the impact. It really made a difference between people continuing their dream and not. Sometimes those really made a true difference. And sometimes you think, oh, $1,000, $2,000 doesn't make that big a difference. But the impact on a student who is doing full-time, not able to work a lot, it truly made a difference between being able to pay for tuition and not. So that to me was total life-changing of making someone be able to drop out or stay in school. They would make decisions based upon that. So that was huge to me because we have some people still working in the health system and because of that. Hi, this is eye care trainer Wilma Allen. Many of you may have seen me when you received your eye care training for reporting, oncology or pharmacy. You may also have seen me at the hospitals in Tappahannock, at Shore and at Gloucester and at the eight cancer centers for Riverside. <laughs> <laughs> Cancer care is dear to my heart. Ever since I started working at, at Riverside, I've been working with and for cancer patients. Initially, I worked as the outreach coordinator at the Cancer Center in Newport News, and that's when I learned about the services Riverside provides for women that have no insurance. We provide screenings, pap smears, and breast exams for them that they could not afford otherwise. And that's when I heard about the Foundation First, that they are providing funds for these services. In addition, um, when I first started working at the Cancer Center, I thought it would be somewhat of a depressing place to work since patients there have cancer and it's a serious illness. But I have found that Cancer patients are the most positive and upbeat people you will ever meet. Um, so I love working with the cancer centers and cancer patients. Um, Riverside provides skilled uh, medical. You can always turn it over. Yeah, Riverside provides skilled and compassionate cancer services. But we do not only treat the disease, we also treat the whole person around the disease. And some of the services we offer for our cancer patients are massages, pet therapy. We have a garden at the Cancer Center in Newport News. We also have a music and art program. We have nutritionist services. And last but not least, we also have the oncology navigators that guide the cancer patients through their treatment and help them make the best decisions. Riverside, uh, like I mentioned earlier, so they provide funds to uh, for screenings for uninsured person for uninsured patients, and also medication and living expenses. These services are at no cost to our patients, and the funds come from the Riverside Foundation. So I invite you today to continue supporting the Riverside Foundation in this year's team member ki giving campaign. <laughs> so we can continue to treat the whole person and care for our patients as we would care for those we love. Yeah, well, and, let's, yeah. and we'll go around and I'll do some candid style stuff and then we'll, call, we'll circle back around to that I invite you part because I really like that. All right. Um, yeah, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your, um, 
your, not employment history, but <laughs> your work history with Riverside. So tell us about when you started and, and, and what that role was like and how that's evolved. Okay, I started at the Cancer Center here in Newport News as the outreach coordinator. I provided a lot of education to the community about cancer prevention, about resources for cancer. I also helped, and that was one of the greatest parts of the job, I helped cancer patients. I fit wigs for them. So I got to go and pick out wigs from uh, that I could give then to the patients. Uh, we also had a makeup workshop for the cancer patients where they, could, where they would learn how to cover up the blemishes that chemotherapy or radiation therapy uh, created for them. Um, this is also when I learned Riverside has a grant to, with uh, the Every Woman's Life program to provide free mammogram screenings. And this is when I learned that we also provide free pap smears and breast exams. The Every Woman's Life program only covers the mammograms, but Riverside, through the foundation, was able to cover the, the exams. This also allows us to work with some of the free community clinics. Uh, once a month, I went to the Gloucester Free Clinic, and we provided uh, screenings for patients up there. So tell us a little bit more about patient navigation. I think that um, I think that a lot of people assume that that is a given when you visit a health system, and they quickly realize that it is not something that comes along with their insurance bill. Um, so can you talk about the Riverside navigation, patient navigation system and, and the benefits you think that that brings to a patient and their family as they're traveling through their healthcare journey? Right. So um, in my experience, the navigators are oftentimes there when the patient meets with the doctor and receives the cancer diagnosis to provide immediate assistance after the diagnosis. The oncologists and the nurses provide the medical perspective of the treatment, but the navigators outline services available for transportation, for uh, assistance with housing. Um, many patients might not be able to work during their treatment. Um, they also give out gift bags with, with items that the patients need. Um, they find resources to pay the electric bill. Uh, they are there for the entire journey, not only for the medical portion, but for the all-around portion. That's probably the sound bite of the day. Very good. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, and, um, and so patient navigation is something that, that the foundation supports, particularly in the cancer department. And so we'll make sure we'll do some, we'll do some words over that so that that'll make reference to, to what you're saying. Um, and... Tell us a little bit about, so what's interesting, when I started, eye care was <laughs> the, the, the elephant in the room everywhere. <laughs> um, talk to us about how, you, the, the, talk to us about the resilience of your, your team and, you know, sort of what your most, you know, what, what's your most proud moment from the integration of that and, and how your team members stepped up and, and really took a hold of that. All right, so... The eye care team, we were 80, 80, about 80 team members and still are, but my, my immediate team, the oncology team, there are only three of us. So we learned early on that we all had to pitch in to get things done. Oncology is a very small area, however, there's a lot of work involved in it. Um, you know, people were nervous. They were yes. nervous learning a new tool. They were sort of afraid that they might might mess up yes. and what that could, that could do. But in the end, how did that bring people together? Well, I remember when I worked at the Cancer Center and I only did a little bit of scheduling and I didn't work much in the electronic health record we had at the time, but just for the work I did, I had to access three or four different systems and then I still had to get a fax sent or had to pick up the phone and call someone to find the information I needed. And with eye care now, we have everything in one system and you can really, you have one source to care for your patient. Um, and yes, it was a big transition, just like any change, any upgrade, any system change it takes to get used to. But overall, I feel we can provide better patient care now than we did before. 
All right, and so my favorite topic for <laughs> is um, can you, oh, I'd like for you to speak to sort of the extracurriculars that you oftentimes take part in. Um, you mentioned earlier uh, the heavy lifting and being small teams but having great tasks to accomplish. Talk, can you talk to us a little bit? I mean, you can use like the bills for example. I mean, <laughs> use all the examples, you know, when you, I, I basically want people to know that there are other ways to involve themselves in the foundation that don't necessarily involve writing a big check. Um, it can be the the day to day stuff and coming and learning a little bit more about the health system and the needs and taking those messages back and sharing, but uh, but showing up for the extracurriculars. So talk a little bit about what you've done with the foundation outside mm -hmm. of your day to day task. I was uh, part of the Rella team and the Rella team the. Riverside Emerging Leaders Academy. We participated in the team members giving campaign and had our own uh, program. Then I also participated in a luncheon at my office. We had it catered and we had walking tacos uh, that were provided and, we, and all the proceeds went to the foundation. Um, my daughter and I actually went to the Billsbury, Billsburg? brewery in Williamsburg uh, for the fall festival uh, to raise some funds for Doctors Hospital in Williamsburg. You want to do that part again? Uh, yes. Okay. yes the it's a weird Is it Billsburg yeah. or Billsbury? Bill, Billsburg. Billsburg and Brewery. And that was an awareness event to okay. bring... To bring um, to bring awareness to the Make a Difference Fund in Williamsburg. Because okay. most people don't know that that exists. Right. And what it is. And so, yeah, so 250 people came and you came to help facilitate okay. that, that party. That All right. Party. Yeah, so, okay, you want to just do that part again? Sure. Uh, I volunteered to. I know, I know. Yeah, yeah. My daughter and I participated at the Make a Difference Awareness uh, fundraiser at the Billsburg Brewery in Williamsburg. It was like a fall festival. We provided pumpkins and, and little paint kits for the children to paint on the pumpkins. And it was just a great event for people to come out and learn about the Make a Difference fund and what it can do for members in the Williamsburg community. I like that a lot. <laughs> Yeah, all right, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything we want to circle back around to. Um, you want to give Taffy a shout out? Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, so, so talk, talk to us about how, how the foundation was introduced to you through the Rela program. Um, Julia came out to our uh, one of our classroom sessions and told us about foundation and and what the foundation does for not only our patients but also for team members here at Riverside, and that is how I got involved with the foundation and I I love to volunteer for the foundation. It's always fun and it is for a great cause. And Taffy intro, Taffy Simone who is the leader of the Emerging Leaders Academy. She introduced me to it, and even so, I graduated from the program now. I still am in touch with her and volunteer continuously. Yes, I like that. Good. <laughs> um, what was the one? I just had one thought. It just, it just left me. Oh, um, oh, would you like to make mention to the fact that, that or say something about, like, we invite you to, or we would love for you to have uh, a member of the foundation team come yeah. out and talk to your group, kind of like they yeah. talk to us, and, and say that how, how that might benefit yeah. a, a person's group. Before the, I, I was introduced to the foundation in the RELA program, I, I knew it was there, but I didn't really know much about it. So if you would like to learn more about the foundation, please reach out to the foundation team members and they will come out and introduce the program to you and what your donations would be going to. My name is Sadie Thurman. I'm the Chief Nursing Officer of Riverside Regional Medical Center. I've been with Riverside Health System for 12 years. Um, I actually came as a travel nurse. I came December 11, 2006, 2006. It was my first day. Came as a travel nurse. I remember I rolled in and they're like, is the emergency department? Okay, cut that piece. All right, so I'm going to start over. <laughs> See? No, Matt's like, oh. Do it and just go through. We'll circle back. 
yeah. around to it so that you, you know, yeah. you'll, you'll get a feel for it and you'll get kind of warmed up. Yeah. It's always really awkward at the very beginning. It is. It's like, well, it's horrible. So tell us about yourself and your history with Riverside. Like my name again, all over yes, again? All over. Oh my gosh. My name is Sadie Thurman. I'm the Chief Nursing Officer of Riverside Regional Medical Center. I came to Riverside 12 years ago as a travel nurse in the emergency department. Uh, I rolled in and the charge nurse is like, you're ready to take a trauma patient. I'm like, how do you even know I can do trauma? She said, you look like it. So it was a great experience. Um, and I thought I was going to be there for 13 weeks, but I fell in love with Riverside. And 12 years later, I am now the chief nursing officer at Riverside Regional Medical Center. Um, I have an interesting story. My husband was born at Riverside Regional and my two children. So a lot of what I do today is, is the future not only for myself, but our, for our community. Did my dad deliver your husband and your kids? Oh my gosh, that's your dad? Yeah. Oh my gosh, so I, oh, so, so cut this part. So I can't even go, so it's, well, so, so I'm double booked, so I'm on a lot of the EMS board, so for PEMS board, so March 20th, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't go to Dr. Lockhart's thing, and I just put two and two, so I'm like, Beth, can you go to this event? It's so important, and so, yeah, Beth, our assistant chief nursing officer, will be going to that event, because I can't make it, but that's your dad. <laughs> Probably. I don't well, know who delivered him. But, but. obviously, yeah, if I hadn't mentioned this part, this is Matt. Yeah. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. This is Matt in the background, and, and his dad's Dr. Lockhart. Matt <laughs> has graciously agreed to do a lot of work for us. Um, and as a, as, as a, I was trying to show our gratitude, we will be naming the mother baby waiting room after waiting area oh so like he that. didn't know that and i just spoiled that whole no, thing oh uh, my uh, god <laughs> <laughs> i was like i'm totally leaving now <laughs> okay i was like oh i was like i was like we put like a like put like a you know like a, a sculpture out by the pond or something i was like can we just name something after him instead you know like something yeah like, like that's something that's like, huge something yeah kind of like meaningful you yeah. know like like the weight yeah anyway so that was our first thought was oh, yeah, that's so, awesome yeah, so. no i don't know who delivered my husband i'll have to ask him no, i'm just kidding <laughs> Uh, 40, why would you do that on camera, uh, 1974? How old is he, 44? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my dad would probably deliver him. Yeah. I was like, our, our two children are Casanova and, um, uh, both Casanova. How so. are they? They're nine and six. He probably delivered them too. <laughs> no, Casanova. <laughs> it was, I know. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was Casanova. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's funny. Yeah, that's, that's It's funny. all full circle. So when you talk about, I mean, you talk about, you know, your husband being born there, uh, your children being born there. I was born there. I always say I was born there. I'm going to die there. You yeah. Know? Things that my family members have. I mean, Riverside is woven through my family story. You call um, Sadie when you got, you know, people. I know. I know. I know. I know. Everybody but, just calls Sadie. No, I'm just well, kidding. My, my husband was walking out the door because he, so his great uncle was in the hospital and had been airlifted mm -hmm. to Riverside Regional from Walter Reed. And and his great aunt called and said, oh my gosh, I, she was, I think, in, in Richmond receiving her treatment and they didn't have anybody to come stay with them. So my husband's walking out the door with a, his like sleeping bag, blankets. I'm like, you can't walk. It's like a clean facility. Like, you can't did bring you wash all those blankets? Like, I clean blankets. Like, you can't do that. Like, you know, you gotta represent me well. So I called her and I was like, hey, by the way, isn't it okay if my husband sleeps over with his great uncle? Like, you know. And, Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? Like the sort of the customers, not customer service, but like the, the family service that Riverside offers that you've witnessed throughout your last 12 years here. Family service. So cut that piece too. What do you mean by fam? So like patient experience yeah, and family patient service? Yeah, patient experience, yeah. So... Patient experience is, is a little different for me. Um, you know, I'm, obviously I'm a nurse and, and everything I do is about our patient. It's about our patient and our families. Um, I don't know, that's the silly question. X out of that too. <laughs> so why don't you talk about um, some of the, the things that you've seen come to fruition over the last year or so that about the, to you? You mean like with the foundation. See, that's yeah. why I'm bad on the camera piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so things that so things that wouldn't have happened because they weren't in the budget um, or things that we might have had to have waited on but were, were made possible, um, you know, in the last year or so that, um, that have made an impact around the facility. So there are a lot of things in healthcare, um, and patients come to Riverside, and they we have the greatest, the best technology, and they expect that. 
a lot of times you pull in your team members and you know, you, you ask them, and it's not always the greatest and best technology. Sometimes it's the little things, and that's really where this spoke to me and the foundation and really pulling our team members. And, you know, it's, it's the different things to elevate the patient experience. So last year, our medical surgical practice forum throughout the health system, you know, we asked them, we said, you know, we have all of these things, but what do our patients and our families really need? And they said, you know what, we, we need sensory blankets. And I'm like, what's a sensory blanket? And it was really for a patient's dementia or early Alzheimer's. And, you know, a lot of times we give them medication to help sleep, or um, unfortunately, sometimes we have to even put on some restraints or a side rail up to keep them safe. And really what these sensory blankets can do is instead of picking out IVs or pulling out tubes, we can decrease our medications and restraints and use these activity or sensory blankets and they have different you know touch and feel um, and then it also helps keep them a diversion technique to keep them in bed and so we don't fall or we don't have to use side, side rails or other restraints so we've reduced our restraints in our med medical surgical areas. Um, another thing that spoke, you know, another piece that spoke to me is in Riverside Regional Medical Center and Riverside Shore Memorial we have women and infant um, complexes. Um, so the team got together and, you know, how do you elevate the patient experience? Again, we have all this great, you know, new units, new departments, and, but they got together and, you're, you know, unfortunately sometimes we have moms and families going through the grieving process and they mentioned cuddle cots and I'm like, what, what, what are cuddle cots? And really they're these, they're, they're cots that actually give families and moms extra time with, with their um, child who unfortunately passed away and through the grieving process and those precious moments are, are so important for our nurses and our cl clinicians and especially our, our patients and our families and a lot of times we're able to change our patient experience by just those little pieces of supplies and equipment and you know I say little but the impact on the team and our patients is huge. Yeah, yeah, cut a lot of that out. <laughs> I, have a, I have a funny story that you reminded me when you were talking about the restraints. I think, like, Bill, so one time Kristen in a board meeting, she was giving a presentation, and instead of saying bed bound, she said bound to the bed. <laughs> and, and Mr. Downey looked up and goes, looked around, and he goes, guys, did you know we find people to the bed? <laughs> Well, no, it, it's true, and I mean, now with, you know, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're get, we get crazy. So this was like, more, she was mortified, like, I meant to say bed bound, not, not, not bound to the bed. <laughs> well, even like a side rail is considered a restraint, and so if you have all side rails up, so if you can, you know, use diversion techniques, and that's where those sensory blankets, and, and keep them where, you know, maybe we don't have to have restraints all for side rails, and keep them from falling, and then you know family members know we're keeping their loved ones safe. It's it's huge. I didn't mention the sound machines, but anybody that's had you know a loved one in the in a hospital or you've been a patient in a hospital, you know there's different noises. You're tied up to a cardiac monitor or you have IV pumps, and there's a lot of beeps and different sounds. And so another piece. Um, of equipment or a supply that our medical surgical practice forum mentioned was these sound machines and we had trialed it at another facility and the impact was huge. Um, the quietness of the facility because again those just those uneasy noises and just to be able to have that white noise um, is a huge impact on our patients and because healing and rest for um, you know rest for okay that part's silly. Um, to be able to rest in in the healing environment has a huge impact. I know. Well, they so like, doctors' hospital gave me a cue as a go because it was doctors' yeah, hospital yeah. started, and that was one of Adria's little going away present was the sound machine. I'm like, I will never forget you guys because of the sound machine. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, my my Wi-Fi doesn't reach my bedroom, our new bedroom, and it really is making me mad. And so I like have, don't want to have to use my data, but like I need to not to listen to him. Like <laughs> it's like. It's like the yeah. earth is like crumbling next to me. So yeah. Yeah. No, but um, that that's something that it's interesting. You mentioned bring that up is that um, David Peebles, uncle, mm -hmm. great uncle. One of his biggest pet he is a donor. Yeah. But one of his biggest pet peeves that when Kay's he dad? that's Kay's uncle. Oh, okay. So yeah. Um, one of the things that he said to he said to me when he found out I worked at Rosie, he's like. It's always so loud, loud, loud yeah. when I have to stay there overnight. And 
And so that, you know, that, that brought that back around full circle to me. I was like, gosh, you know, anybody and everybody, they all, everyone has the same complaint. Yeah. And it's these little things and, and no, sound machines aren't on, on the, in the budget. No, no, and they're, but they're, it's a huge impact. And not every patient can have a sound machine because if you're in critical care, we need, uh, unfortunately, we're going to be in there, you know, every five minutes, every 15 minutes, you know, every hour. But on patients that are on a medical surgical floor, rest is important. So a lot of times, you know, we can say, you know, we have the sound machine and we'll give you this four hour block of time. And that's again, huge on, on healing. So, but it is, it's, it's loud. There's a lot of times we, you know, we do everything we can. We got carts that are squeaky, our doors that are loud, or the beeps. And the other day I went on our CVT unit, our cardiovascular telemetry unit, and it actually was eerie. It was so quiet. There wasn't a call bell. There wasn't a pump. There wasn't, and of course you can never use the word, the Q word, the quiet word. And I almost said it in the other, like, don't say that. And I'm like, it was, and that's one of our huge initiatives. And this, this helps with our patient experience and sound machines because it's, Hospitals are loud, but that's not our goal. Have you met Liz Mullins? She's on the telemetry unit. Doctor Mullins. She's actually Doctor Mullins. It's um, no, I do. Yeah, I have. I have not. I mean, he's so he's on the board, and we talk all the time. And yeah. so I know Liz, but a lot of them just for safety block out. So just and so I haven't uh, seen uh, Liz Mullins yet. But no. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, tell us a little bit about elaborate more on um, what you witnessed when the foundation asked all of the health system to, to give suggestions <laughs> and and that process like what did you think initially when you saw that versus what did you think when the day was there and everything was funded and rah rah like what was what was the difference in thought like oh god they sent me another email to wow that worked no actually when we first got the email and i'm like f you know, we knew about the help fund, we knew about a lot of the foundation initiatives, but it felt different because you're asking a nurse or clinician at the bedside, and this is my chance where I get to have an impact. That, you know, we get to make the suggestion and we get to change patient experience and our family's experience. So to me as a chief nursing officer, it was huge because you could go to our team and they they know exactly what our patients need. And you, a lot of times, like you said, we, we have, things that you know we're always going to do for patient safety and we're always going to have the greatest technology but it's the little things um, so when you went to the team and they rattled off a million things and finally because we wanted to have an impact not on just one facility but the health system so the medical surgical practice forum was was great and there they knew exactly they had their initiatives they wanted a quiet environment that's where the sound machines came in and they had a huge need for um, our patients to keep them safe and alternatives to other things like medications and um, you know, restraints for our patients with dementia. And you get confused when you come into a hospital. A lot of times we'll find we're taking patients, especially our, you know, elderly patients or our population, we're taking them out of their, their setting and we're putting them in a hospital. And you, a lot of times you get confused um, if you take patients out of their environment. So it's great for our, our bedside team members and clinicians to be able to have a direct impact. If you, um, moving forward, how do you think that the response will be, um, I've mentioned the goal of wanting to be able to throw that call to action out anytime throughout the year. Um, what do you think that we as a, as a whole health system can do better to make sure that the foundation knows what is needed and then for us to be able to respond to that? Um, so I think I think this last time was a great where we did get feedback so from our administrators and our chief nursing officers and you know we had the communication out there and it was really the going to our teams and saying what do you guys need um, this last one just blew me away especially on social media where you got to see the day of giving and and first you're like, okay, are they gonna, or is the community or even team members think this, other team members think it's a great idea. And all of a sudden you just saw on Facebook and the social media and you're, the funding was there, all projects were funded. And to me, honestly, that's, it, it, I, was, I was shocked and, you know, just, just honored to be a part of the organization actually. Yeah, um, and so 
throughout your 12 years, um, your, your history at Riverside, what ha, what, are there any projects that have stood out to you the most, no matter the size? Um, I mean, you got, you know, your huge things like building the sanctuary. The sim lab. It's not here yet, but no, I'm just kidding. Here, <laughs> so, I mean, we're talking about a big initiative. It is. It'll continue to be. So, because even after we had an original goal of 300, Bill said 350,000. Oh. Ma we got close to that, and then magically it became a million overnight. Yeah. And we're like, oh, wait, okay. Um, but so the, the goal is to be able to continue raising money for it to perpetuate its usage and, and pay for it because it doesn't, you don't just pay for it once and then boom, you're done. It'll need continual maintenance. But what do you think that the simulation lab, um, what did that, did that, did that have an impact on you knowing that that came as a result of people wanting to support one of our, our, our fallen team members, um, and then what will that do in the future? How will that, how will that improve your team? So a absolutely, for the Sim Lab to be donated for one of our, our our team members that are no longer with us had a huge impact. You know what a what an amazing you know opportunity. Not opportunity. That's not the right word. Sorry, delete that part. But what an you know it's just an amazing it's it's an amazing honor. Um, but what what the Sim Lab will do for our future is our it, it pays for our future over and over. Really, with our education of our nursing team and our surgeons and our physicians, you know, we have a lot of scenarios that hopefully you know we never have to see. I mean, you have trauma patients and you know deliveries that that always don't go as textbook plan, and you know we have surgeries and we have to be able to as clinicians be prepared at all times. And right now, currently, you practice, you go through drills, you go through scenarios, but the simulation lab and having real, you know, real life scenarios and, um, you know, mannequins that we can change. So I can change where, you know, the heart rate changes, our pupils change, you can make a patient or a mannequin, you know, diaphoretic. And we can do these scenarios that a lot of times as nurses, we read in a textbook and you're like, oh, that's classic, that's textbook. But we don't get that, you know, you know, every year. You may get it in a, in your lifetime as a nurse or a physician or a surgeon. It's important that we're ready for those sickest patients, those critical patients, and um, those things that we hope we never see, but we know in our lifetime we will. So the future of the Sim Lab, I mean, again, is, is our future and our training of our future nurses and our physicians. <laughs> Um, Not only our future, but our current. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a huge impact. It's exciting. Well, to exciting. me, the, the funny thing about it, the ironic thing about it is, is that we've always had to pay to send people off to go to these things. And now we will be charging, we'll be reaping a revenue from yeah. other people who get to come utilize it. So even beyond Riverside, it's going to help with the community and building a stronger network of, of providers and, and their support staff. Um and so that's a really great opportunity, you know. It's always nice to be able to, like, reach into the black of, of, of something instead yeah. of just being a cost. Um, and so. Yeah. See, I don't even, th you know, I just, I don't even think about that. I saw the plans, and we got to see some of the mannequin demonstration. Of course, I go into the, no, don't put this on, but I go into the L&D one, and my background, ED, and I'm like, oh, and, you know, the, all the L&D, they're laughing. I could not do what your dad did, Matt, but. <laughs> You know, because babies, they scare me. Um, well, the, I like the baby part. The mom part, I'm like, oh, oh, my gosh. Your leg falls off, I got gotcha. you. Um, but no, of course, you know, the different demonstrations and just just to be able to, you know, do the different maneuvers and do the different techniques that we need to to keep our skills up is is a huge impact. So I don't even think about charging. I just, I just think of my nurses, you know, my physicians and throughout the health system and and what we're going to be able to accomplish or what we're going to be able to, how it's going to impact and ultimately on our patients. And it, again, it ties to our patient outcomes, quality safety service, so on all. Because we can even do customer service, our patient experience round. So I'll, Katie over here, um, you know, we can practice and do teach back and do scenarios where right now it's sometimes an awkward thing between, you know, clinicians and somebody's pretending to be a patient, but you can do those real life.